Hey, Pixel here. Today I've got a user request, and this is probably the request that I get the most often from people, and that's how to play an old Android game on modern devices. Now, the game that I always hear about the most is Samurai vs. Zombies Defense, but there's a number of games that fall into this category, like Nova 3 or some of the Chaos games, Chaos Ring, Chaos Rings games. Uh, 1, 2, and Omega all fall into this same bucket. There's a number of games, actually, that, that fall into this same bucket, and what had happened was back in about 2014, Android segmented itself quite substantially. Uh, they at in, before 2014, they had used a code compiler called Dalvik. You may see, you may have remembered that word from running old versions of Android. There was wiping the Dalvik cache and stuff like that. Well, what Dalvik was, was a virtual machine that did compiling of code. So it took the code that developers had written and then it prepared it and sent it over into machine language, which is ones and zeros, so that the phone could translate it and then make the game run. Well, because it was a just-in-time compiler, which meant you installed the developer's code, and then when you launched the app, it launched the virtual machine and then compiled the code at runtime, it was not perfectly optimized. And they moved to one they call Art now. And that's what they're still on today is Art. And that is a pre-compiled code model where, I can't remember exactly what they call it because I'm not but a very poor developer. I do a little bit of developing. That's not my thing, but I understand it a little bit. So what Art does instead is it compiles the code at the time of install into your phone. And that way the machine code is just ready when you want to run the application. That's going to have obvious performance benefits, but on top of that, it had some debugging benefits as well. And apparently it's gone well because they haven't switched since then. The problem is, is that because they switched compilers, it made a lot of code uh, discrepancies or uh, incompatibilities would probably be the better word to use there. So because they were incompatible, there was this weird versioning system that happened where I think it was for one version, I think 4.4.4 KitKat, it might have been, was the one that it actually used both the compilers. And I find that if I want to run Dalvik based games, I have to run either before that or I have to run after that and run the art games. I don't really like running 4.4.4, but that's just my personal experience. Other people probably have had much different experiences. So what I set out to do for this user requested video was try to make Samurai vs. Zombies run in multiple situations, trying to figure out how can I get this thing to actually work. And what I found were three different options for how you can run it on some modern hardware. And I have good news and bad news. Let's start with the bad news first. The modern hardware is not going to be an Android device. Unfortunately, all new Android devices all run on the art compiler, and there's just no way to make a Dalvik based game run that run on that machine. Maybe sometime in the future, there may be there may be Android devices that are so powerful that they can actually emulate old Android within, but that doesn't exist today. So the three different ones, let's just start with the first one. The first one is to not play it on a new device at all and actually just go get an old device and install the games on an old device. This has some drawbacks, but it has some real benefits as well. Well, the first drawba drawback is that these devices are just gonna be old and, and they're gonna come with all of the drawbacks of having old hardware. Dead batteries, cracked screens, you know, scratched chassis. All these things that you're going to have to deal with and probably refurbish if you actually care about that to play these games. The second big drawback with using old hardware is that the system installed applications and kind of just the basic stuff you would use like Chrome, for instance, has bloated quite a bit since 2014. So if you install those apps, just those basic ones, or even the ones that just came pre-installed in the system, they're going to be much bigger than they were when the application first came out and when that device first came out. So that means that the app, the device itself in the OS might actually buckle a little bit, might have some performance blips. Um, so be prepared for that. What I've experienced though, running some of these old devices, because I've got more than one around here that I've used and used successfully. Um, I've found that though their operating systems may be a little chunky, getting in the game and once the game runs, it runs pretty well. And so I've been pretty happy with the performance in game. And that's with multiple games as well. 
Um, the benefit of using old hardware is that it's actual hardware. It's the intended devices that these games were meant to be played on. They have a touch screen. You can do everything that you were supposed to do with them, and you can interact with the game the way it was meant to be interacted with. As long as, you know, any purchase stores and such are still open, you can still use those as well. So, great. You can enjoy the game the way your nostalgia says that it should be enjoyed. The second way that I've found to play these games is to install an Android emulator on your modern PC. Now, the great thing about this is, is that you get a big performance boost because you're emulating on a PC, which has tons and tons of horsepower, way more than an old Android device from 2014 has. The bad thing is, is that the, the emulators aren't perfect. So the drawbacks here, A, it's not perfect. Right, it's not. It's emulation, so it's not. It's not going to be dead on. I have found with the emulator that I've used, and I'll get to that in a second. Which one I used exactly? Uh, I found that with the emulator that I used, that the emulation was pretty good. The, the experience was pretty good. It's nice and smooth. Um, but I did find that using a mouse was kind of weird. Uh, it, it wasn't intended to be played that way, even though it worked okay. If you were trying to emulate games that required very quick touches in multiple spots, let's say Nova 3. If you wanted to play Nova 3 on a Blue Stacks or something like that, you might you might have an issue with that because you're going to have to touch in multiple places, and I'm not sure exactly how you would overcome that. It's possible that some of these emulators might have you know, touch profiles or something that you can program, but from the ones I played, they played well, but it was reliant on having interfaces that didn't need very lightning quick touches. Now, as I just mentioned a second ago, the emulator that I used is called Bluestacks. Bluestacks is the premier Android emulator out there right now, but there is a catch with this. When you install Bluestacks right now, Bluestacks website wants to push you to version number four. And version number four is based on, I believe, Android 7. It might be a later one, but I think I read that it was Android 7. Correct me in the, if I'm wrong in the comments. I know that's what the internet does. If you want to have one that runs Dalvik code, you have to go back to Bluestacks 3. And herein lies a problem, a problem that I have solved for you. The problem with getting Bluestacks 3 is that when you go to download Bluestacks 3 and find all the links on the internet, it redirects you to Bluestacks website, and then Bluestacks website says, no, you're going to install number four. Well, you can get it from Softpedia, and I was able to get a working version of Bluestacks 3 on Softpedia. I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. So if you want to go the Android PC emulator way, you can do that. And I gotta say, it worked pretty well. The one other hang-up that I did have using Bluestacks, though, was for some reason in Bluestacks 3, the Google Play Store didn't work for me. When I'd boot it up or launch it, I'd go to search and it would crash immediately. The workaround for that was I'd have to go into Bluestacks' actual app store that they have because they make a cut of games on their own little app store that they provide with the emulator. If you go into their app store and search for a game, when it doesn't come up with anything, they try to redirect you to the Google store through a web interface within the emulator, and that allows you to directly download whatever game it is that you're looking for. So it is a little bit of a workaround. It's a little bit wonky. Uh, I'm hoping that the Bluestacks 3 problem I had with the Google Play Store was just a me issue because um, it didn't seem like it was supposed to be doing that. It might have been something weird with my cache or something weird about how I had already installed Bluestacks 4, but your uh, mileage may vary on, on, on doing the same thing. So that's old hardware. That's using an emulator. The final one is probably, probably the better one of any of all of them, if you can actually make it work. And that's to find the same game on a completely other platform. So iOS has had better luck in many cases with keeping games alive. They didn't go through the same compiler issue. So if you have access to an iPhone or an iPad or are willing to purchase one, whatever game it is that you're looking for may run there. More interestingly, you may be able to find the application if it was a relatively popular application on the Windows Store. And that's because back in this same time frame, around 2014, they had this really big push for this universal Windows applications thing where they were trying to get all the mobile application developers to come over to them and publish for Windows Phone, which is now a dead platform, but also for Windows itself. You could play these games and they would integrate with Xbox and all kinds of stuff. Well, 
Samurai vs. Zombies Defense actually exists on the Windows Play on the Windows Play Store, on the Windows storefront. Um, I was able to download it there. I played it there, and actually, it was the most performant in that version of all the ways that I played it. It had the least chop in it, but the controls were a little bit weird. It was kind of cool being able to use a keyboard rather than having to click the left and right side of the screen to emulate a touch. I was able to just use the keys on the keyboard because they were all baked into the controls of the game. Uh, I did find though that the controls were a little bit laggy. Not might not be such a big issue with Samurai vs. Zombies Defense and obviously your mileage may vary based on what game it is that you're trying to play in that case but it was a pretty pleasant way to play an old game like that and I gotta say in all three of these ways that I played this game and I played the first like three levels of this game so many different times now um, I enjoyed what I was playing. It, it felt like Samurai vs. Zombies Defense or, you know, whatever else I was playing. I played a lot of other stuff on the old hardware because there was a number of games that I hadn't played in a while simply because they haven't been available on my devices in a long time. In fact, probably behind me, I've more than likely been showing a lot of these games as we go. I'm not sure what's actually going to go behind me, but something very interesting, I'm sure. So that's it for my three ways to play old Android games. You must have liked this video because you made it all the way through to the end. So please leave a like because it very much helps the channel. Also, if you haven't subscribed, if you found me somehow through YouTube search or Google search, you should subscribe because I like to do videos like this where I help people out and show them how to play games in interesting ways. And I also review a lot of indie games. Until next time, this has been Pixel.